one of the rooms at the Royal Academy, you make these marble grass stems scaled up. And then also there's a child's push chair and a surveillance camera, among other things. How did, how did that particular installation come about? When I talk about the one piece, normally it doesn't come from a, a very rational or, or development. A, it comes from many, many uh, vague aspects. You know, the place we live here, we call it Cao Chao Di, which in Chinese is a grass field. And the grass always relate to, we call it grassroots, or, you know, or to ordinary, you know, to those, uh, uh, and they poetically, we Chinese always have a poetry called uh, um, the wildfire cannot really uh, burn or destroy it because when the spring comes, it becomes green again. You know, it's something. Grass like will always grow again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always like that. So it's kind of interesting, you know, uh, for me to see if I can have a, a marble to to casting those grass. It's not easy because uh, it's uh, it's very fragile. All those materials, grass, are, are beautiful because it's not so so stiff. It, it really can can move. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I did iron casting and did marble, and uh, it get it has its own form. It shows it's impossible, and also shows some uh, some uh, new aspect. And uh, there's a uh, baby's pulling a car there. It's from uh, one incident when, when I was released daily, I would uh, take my boy to to the park. You know, I want to spend as much time with him as possible because I am kind of afraid I, I would lose him. So one day my driver said, oh, somebody follow us, you know, taking photos. I was kind of mad because I just running after this guy I said, you know, you're taking photo of us, why, you know? And he said, no, I don't know you, you know, I'm just a tourist, don't try to bother me. So I'm, I, I'm very frustrated, you know, because uh, if it's with my, my boy there, you know, if it's myself, I would not bother. So I grabbed his camera, took his uh, memory card, I gave back the camera. Uh, before I gave, gave it back, I said, that if you promise you me you will never follow me again, I will give back your camera. He said, I will never follow you again. So I gave him back his camera. <laughs> so he said, you know, I, this is my job. I said, okay, you know. But I take those memory card. I still feel a little bit bad because I, 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 you know, I made a mistake, huh? I made a mistake maybe. I put it in my computer then I was shocked. This baby carriage of my boy jumps out from the, you know, a image. So they take careful photos of uh, my baby's uh, pulling car. And with photos of the restaurant I was last night, you know, every room, the counter, the hallway. I, I was speechless to see how a state functions, how they invade people's so privacy, and how, how powerful they are. They are so powerful, but they are only so powerful because they violate very essential values. You know, all those values we cared about, they don't care. That's why I made them so powerful. As you approach your studio, outside there are surveillance cameras. And on each of the lampposts where the cameras are, you've hung lanterns. Of course, you've made surveillance cameras out of marble, so I suppose you're playing with that whole idea of, of, of the surveillance state. My condition sometimes becomes so dry, so so dismeaningful and uh, so almost very dreadful. So I try to use a humor and uh, to, to, to make myself make a move. You know, it's a difficult uh, game, but uh, I still have to make a move. You know, I always say, you make a move, I make a move. So that's, uh, 
It seems still a fair game, but you know, it's very difficult. <laughs>